Hey, welcome to JLB Sports TV. I'm Justin Block, and uh, let's start off with some NBA draft recap. Now, the most interesting team this week had to be the Minnesota Timberwolves. First, they acquired the number five overall pick in a trade with the Wizards for shooting stud Rudy Gay. That gave them the fifth and the sixth picks in the NBA draft. Then come draft time, they selected Spanish point guard Ricky Rubio with the fifth pick in the draft. And then following that, with the sixth pick, they select Syracuse point guard Johnny Flynn. What the hell? And then, later in the first round, they go ahead and pick UNC point guard Ty Lawson. That gave him three pure point guards in the first, first round of the draft. Completely unheard of. Now, granted, they did go ahead and trade Lawson, but I simply don't understand the fifth and the sixth picks. Fine, it's okay. Take Rubio with the fifth pick. He's a great player, warranted at that spot. But then take a score with a sixth pick, a shooting guard type shooter like Stephen Curry at six, or maybe a big man like Jordan Hill. But I would prefer taking Stephen Curry at six, because that'd be one hell of a backcourt in my mind. But don't take another point guard at six in Flynn. That makes both Flynn and Rubio unhappy, and Rubio already had an already pretentious situation with coming to the NBA. Now Rubio's father said that Ricky might stay in Spain for a couple of years to grow more. Also by 2011, his uh, astronomical $6 million buyout clause will drop down to zero. But really, I have a feeling Ricky doesn't really want to play in Minnesota. His agent has a history of steering clients toward bigger clubs, and I don't know, if I was Ricky, I wouldn't want to play in Minnesota either. It's in the middle of nowhere, not to offend any uh, Timberwolves fans out there. Thank Lee Jian Leon a couple years ago, being so disappointed in having to go play for the Milwaukee Bucks, a small town team without international attention. He was a Chinese player and really wanted to go to a big West Coast or East Coast city with, lots, with a lot of Asians there to go watch him play. No, he ended up in Milwaukee. But here, I think the Knicks might come to save Ricky as Donnie Walsh said he might talk to uh, Minnesota by Friday, which was yesterday, about possibly trading for Ricky. What was perhaps the craziest, most important week in U.S. soccer history. Now, on June 21st, the Americans need to beat the champions of Africa 3 to nothing, and have Italy lose to Brazil by the same score to advance further in the Confederations Cup. Now, the Confederations Cup is a tournament held the year before the World Cup to really set it as a, as a tune-up for the World Cup. Teams that win their, uh, their respective regions get to play. For the U.S. men, it was really no big deal. They took care of business, and Brazil did as well. I thought we were lucky to have a chance to play Spain to further see what kind of team we have. Three days later, we went out and beat Spain 2-0 in the semifinals and had the chance to beat uh, Brazil in the finals. Now, after taking a 2-0 lead at halftime, I, along with the rest of the world, was in absolute disbelief and shock. Uh, the U.S. had played outstanding, they created great opportunities, passed the ball well, and our back line was playing absolutely out of their skins. Spectres crossed Dempsey to put the first one in was absolutely great, but the second goal was even better. That was a really impressive goal. Um, Landon Donovan and Charlie Davis per perfectly executed a U.S. counterattack. Donovan, after receiving a stolen ball, shifted the ball to the speedy Davis on the wing, who, with an excellent first touch, threw past to Donovan, and with a little bit of skill and technique, weak-footed the ball home. Absolutely great stuff. But eventually the better talent would take over. Luis Fabiano scored for Brazil about a minute after half, giving Brazil basically 45 minutes to score two goals. No problem for them, they scored the two and then even added the third to uh, win the game. Though this loss was crushing today, it's a huge moral victory for the future of U.S. soccer. These are great opportunities for the U.S. to establish themselves as a great team and to see how they would stack up against the best in the world. Landon Donovan established himself as a world-class player and Tim Howard did the same as a keeper. Howard played absolutely out of his mind throughout the entire tournament and was really the USA team MVP in my mind. This team knows what it's like to be the underdog, but now they know how to win as one too, which is very, very important. Team USA is not nearly the most skilled team and really doesn't have any international superstars, but they played with a sense of urgency, passion, and fighting spirit that has been lacking since the 2002 World Cup. In sharp contrast, at the 2006 World Cup, the team played with really inflated expectations and an unwarranted sense of swagger. This team that played the last week really played within, them, within themselves and proved that they can play with the best in the world. This performance in the Confederations Cup will give the U.S. men a vote of confidence from not only its fans, but the heads of the U.S. Soccer uh, Committee and it gains respect from the, all the world powers. This performance will give the U.S. men a vote of confidence from, this fan, from their fans and respect from the world. Now other international world powers can't treat the U.S. as a punching bag, as a joke anymore. U.S. soccer used to be a complete joke, but not even a disappointment to us, just a joke, because 
fans in the US really didn't even care about them. But I certainly do now. The US team still has a lot of positions up to grab, as the entire starting 11 outside of Tim Howard, Landon Donovan, Josie Altador, and Carlos Bocanegra is completely unsettled. But the character and makeup of this team is set in stone as well in US soccer history. Great performance for the US men, and I'm really looking forward to more World Cup qualifying as well as the World Cup in 2010 in Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm Justin Block, and for this June 29th, this is JLB Sports TV. Thanks, YouTube. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and visit the websites in the sidebar.